Merry Christmas and welcome to the Church Home Christmas Special. I'm David, we're so glad that you've joined us. Christmas is really a season of celebration in so many ways. I think about when I was young and opening up gifts and presents and the joy that I felt from that. And in just a moment, we're gonna talk about one of the greatest stories ever told, specifically around God's generosity towards you. And as a church community, we really find our fulfillment, our joy in the season through the act of giving and generosity. The past few years, we partnered with an organization called Angel Tree. And what they do is we help to actually give gifts to families who have a parent that's incarcerated. They wouldn't have Christmas in this way otherwise. And it's been incredible to watch the impact. We'd love to invite you to help give alongside of us here at Church Home in this way. And you can do so by visiting us at churchhome.org slash give. And now, hey, sit back, relax. It's gonna be a great time together. Enjoy the Christmas special. Oh man, good to see you guys as well. Tell Deborah hi. We're shooting our Christmas special in here. Yeah. Oh no, it's, it's going great. Yeah, thanks. Oh my word. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Are you doing the dishes? Oh, what? oh you caught me, baby. <laughs> I'm always doing the dishes. Only for the Christmas special, because the truth is you never do the dishes. I'll say hi to the neighbors. Tell the church right now. Tell them the truth. Okay. I do do the dishes sometimes. He does not do the dishes, and I cannot lie. It's the birth of Jesus I Christ. I can't lie. I oversee the kids doing the dishes and that essentially counts as doing the dishes. Wouldn't you hmm. agree? No, I'd like to take a poll and see if okay. that counts as you do the dishes. We're about to shoot a scene where we fight, pretend here in the kitchen. <laughs> Kenan, welcome to our annual Christmas special. Yeah, we're so grateful for you to join us. We are going to have a wonderful time celebrating together. This really is a family time for us at Church Home, hence us being in the kitchen and Judah pretending to do dishes. And we are actually very grateful and super excited for Israel Houghton, who has been my friend for 25 years. Israel Houghton is here singing Christmas carols and Christmas songs. We have uh, friends. This is gonna be like our best special ever. I tried to interrupt, but we have friends. We're gonna have We do have great, some great friends. Yeah, great conversations with, and it's just going to be a great time. Well, I gotta we, get back to the dishes. Oh, you just got oh. me with that towel. Oh, sorry, um, sorry, We really sorry. envision this being a family moment. So if you want, yeah. grab your family, gather around, let this be a special part grab of your- Grab or just, uh, just encourage. Yeah, just encourage. So. Here it is. Welcome and enjoy these next few moments of worship and some Christmas carols with Israel. I'm gonna go chat with our neighbors.
Oh, this is so much fun. Well, I'm loving this Christmas special. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know them, Chelsea and I want to introduce you to some of our best friends in the whole world who are having an extraordinary Christmas this year with their new baby boy, River. That is none other than Lauren and Jason Kennedy. Here they are on the Christmas special. Merry Christmas. So By the way, you guys look great. Do you feel good? Yeah. It, you know, it's not my shirt, I gotta be honest. Um, but I wanna thank you for providing it. Um, I feel good. I, it feels a little yeah. tight around the arm, yeah. so I don't wanna. You've been working out. Well, Jason, like, let's jump videos. in. What was Christmas like on E News? Well, uh, <laughs> only had a couple days off, and now I have all the time Wait. in the world. <laughs> 17 years on television. Oh. Jason Kennedy, by the way, if you don't know that Christmas church. Season. Um, we're now in two I different always, conversations. Yeah, we're in two different conversations <laughs> because this is real life. Uh, and this is our real living room. Kidding. Um, it's not. Jace. <laughs> Can you tell me, I have so many questions and I don't want to jump in, but tell me your favorite Christmas traditions. You guys have been married for how many years now? Lovey. Wait, will it be nine this and year? No, it'll be eight years. Eight years this yeah. year. And we're going to get into by so fast. the greatest yeah. Christmas miracle ever. Our baby boy, I would say R, like he's ours as well. No, you guys um, were but our biggest But before we talk about, um, I literally off camera, we just watched their baby boy giggling and laughing. Yes. Uh, we just, we post our son all the time because we can't get enough of him and he is oh. a miracle and he is eight months old now. Um, and <laughs> During uh, this Christmas season. During this beautiful Christmas season. And, uh, but yeah, what would yeah, you say is our- What's some of your favorite traditions since you've been married? Oh, since we've been married. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could go back to childhood as well in, the, in okay, beautiful Dallas, Texas. I'll make it more specific. Any yeah. traditions that your family did mm -hmm. that you carried into your own marriage, and what was the conflict? Like, I want to get oh, into it. Such Between, a way like, to ask. I grew up opening presents so on Christmas Eve. He grew up yeah. opening presents on Christmas morning. So then we yeah, get like married, and people. then which do you do? Uh, I got to disagree. We were like you. You're like Christmas were Eve. Were you? See, but it was. But it, we did one on Christmas. Yeah, one on yeah. Christmas. Of course, that's the jammies. Oh, no, we were all that's on the jammies. Oh, you you, right. you opened yeah, all. You, 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 you yeah. get the jammies the on jammies. Christmas Eve. Yeah, oh. all on Christmas Eve. But the conflict was you you can't do both, and so unfortunately he won out on that one. But so it's Christmas for you guys. This is Christmas yes. for us. So well, what do you have to look forward to on Christmas morning Leading as a the kid family. if all the gifts are Stockings. open? Stockings. Ah, I see. Stockings okay. for Christmas morning. Okay. So any traditions for you guys? Tell me. <laughs> tell me there has to be one tradition you are going to establish with mm -hmm. Baby River, what is it? Is it his pastor kind of reading the scripture to him or what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be watching the church home Christmas special? Yes. I think watching ourselves <laughs> is very um, at the Cathartic. top of the list. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, no, I, I like the idea. We, we kind of do the same thing every Christmas. She makes a beautiful chili. Honestly, it's a phenomenal chili. And Happy then Christmas. we have Christmas uh, music, oh, yeah. like Christmas. Thanksgiving um, and Christmas. <laughs> and then we'll have Christmas music playing. We'll have the tree up, and then we'll give River his first gift. And maybe Which a couple of gifts. Which will be a Bible with his name on it. Probably. Aww. Yeah, message version. No, oh. it's a little bit easier for at his age <laughs> yeah, yeah. to understand. Chelsea and I could get him the Bible with his name on it. I think that'd be the like... sweetest thing ever. I'm gonna be a mess because he's, oh. you know, at this point he's discovering his smile and his laugh, and when he sees you, he lights right up. So when he sees a Christmas tree or lights, he's he really drawn to colors. Yeah. yeah. So when he sees it for the first time, I think that's gonna be the moment that we remember. That's yeah. gonna be the most special part. And then uh, I throw on some Home Alone, you make some chili, and boom, uh, bing, bang, boom, we're uh, off to the races. Oh, <laughs> is is Home Alone your race. Christmas home movie? Home Alone is, the, it's, in my opinion, one of the Golly. better Christmas movies. For sure. It's yeah. one you watch all the Best time. Best soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what so is, good. Best Christmas what is my favorite Christmas movie? Um, Miracle oh, on 34th this. Street. Yeah. New oh, one, um, old one. New one, old one. Oh, uh, new. new. Dylan yeah. McDermott. 95, yep. 94. Yeah. Yeah. And um, The Santa Claus, yes. Tim Allen. Go, you oh, crush the new wow. What's my favorite Christmas movie? Your favorite Christmas movie? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for asking. Yep. Uh, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> watch, it every watch Pride oh. and Prejudice if you don't think it's about Christmas. Just watch. Oh. You're in for a lesson. I'll Go give ahead. you one hint. It's totally gonna give it away. Okay. okay. Let's hear it. Hold on. I no, see, I think I, I, I know Lowe's it. Guess. Oh, I bet Lowe knows, knows it. Lowe knows you're with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. No. Wait, I don't think it's right, but I like. Homeward Bound. Okay. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh no, but that's a good one. No, it's okay. Here's the hint. Bye, buddy. Hope you find oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you guys did it. That's the greatest co cup of coffee in the world. Yeah. Oh. 
That was awesome. Oh, it's so good. Okay. So good. Like, all day long. I have a serious question. Is okay. that all right? I have a serious question yeah. from a serious guy. Um, okay. The reality is there's a lot of people that have kids and have uh, toddlers and they're listening. They're like, oh, my word, this is exciting. But part of your story is you wanted a baby for a long time and it yeah. didn't happen. Christmas after Christmas. Uh, we've spent Christmases or the Christmas season with you guys and, and, and felt, you know, like this is what we were praying for. We, we I mean, a lot of your friends, we, we prayed every day. Um, you know, for, for Baby River. And someday we're going to tell him and it's going to be awesome and I'm going to cry. And he's probably going to be like, who's that guy then? <laughs> Same. But um, what, what would you say to, to the couples out there, to the individuals out there who, you know, one of their big dreams is a baby. And, and here we are in the Christmas season. And one of the real pains in Christmas is actually to remember the gift you still haven't gotten. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just kind of the way it works sometimes. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Uh, you've been married eight years. And all of those Christmases to this point were without uh, the baby that you dreamed about having. Um, what was that like? How'd you get through it? And would there be any kind of, I guess, advice that you'd give people? Well, I'd say we wanted a child, but our view of that was it just, a baby would just add more joy to our lives mm. because I don't feel like it was filling a hole that... Wow we needed to fill it was just going to add so I feel like we were very just like content and having so much fun in our marriage and kind of eating up all the time just the two of us yeah. and having freedom that you don't necessarily have when you have a baby um so great I, advice by the mm -hmm. way yeah. yes so I feel like we were just also very sure of the truth that like God really knows when this little baby is supposed to come into the world not only like the best time for us how he like intends it but also like the best time for river um wow. so we're like we wouldn't want it any other way truly and i feel like that was just the hope that we had to where we weren't panicking and we were like this is happening the way it's supposed to happen and just keep moving forward that's the you know? worst thing you can do when you're trying to have a child and you can't naturally have a child mm -hmm. and you're getting ready to start ivf or you're going through ivf panicking stressing out because yeah. that's not good for your body mm -hmm. um so i think you always had that brilliant mindset of like we have each other right now this nope. is yeah. great we're healthy um mm -hmm. we have so many friends and family that that love us and if it's meant to be god will bring a child into our life yeah. and um that kind of has been the mindset since day one and now this is our first christmas with yeah. our son and it doesn't even feel real and, <laughs> yeah, and it's awesome. really special though. and not having i feel like a lot of people have guilt if they do ivf and I remember kind of struggling with that idea. And I read in this book, um, this girl had triplets and she was telling her story. And I was like, this is truly like a gift that we're given to wow. go yeah. through this experience. And it only like made, made us stronger and made our marriage stronger. And it was kind of like a, an opportunity to bring people in even further into our journey. Like, I agree. Mm -hmm. Will you help me yep. with a shot? Will you, I don't yeah. know. And just, yeah. I remember praying oh, yeah. and knowing when you guys yeah. were, you know, yeah. going through procedures mm -hmm. and talking yeah. and preparing. It was like, okay, here we go, yeah. you know? I loved that you invited us onto the journey yeah, with you. Lot. It was really special. And by us, I mean anybody who wanted to follow it. It was really yeah. helpful. Well, we were honored to have you guys there with us. Mm -hmm. um, cool. it, we just feel extra close because of, you know, going through that situation. Yeah. And that's the same for anybody watching. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, it is such a bonding experience mm -hmm. with your spouse, especially with your family and friends. Yeah. Um, really, really special. I love that that's you gross. talked about contentment mm. because I feel like in the holiday season and we're talking about, you know, we, we're here because we have Jesus yeah. and Jesus came to earth. You know, we're having Emmanuel. Yeah. The Emmanuel Ajo, not Emmanuel. Yeah. Jesus, God with us. But that's I was like, wow, you guys got a heck of a lineup. Both are really good. Both Emmanuels are here. Both Emmanuels are here. But it's, it's, it's really incredible to Christ celebrate is next. That. And talk Christ, Christ is coming. Sorry, Jess. <laughs> Jesus is the reason for the season. <laughs> but it can also be a time for us to think about what we don't have, whether yeah. the family we don't have or the marriage we don't have. Or mm. We don't have the money that we want to buy our kids the gift that they want. Or we don't have the kids that mm. we want to have. Or we don't have the relationship with our parents that we want to have. And that can so easily become our narrative and our mindset. But I love that you talked about, no, your, your narrative and your mindset choose to be contentment yeah to be content that what we have is what wow. god wants us to have yeah. and whether it's a family or whatever we're wrestling with in contentment mm -hmm. really actually focusing on jesus yeah. and thinking 
we do have Jesus. He has given us life and forgiveness. And if nothing else, we, we've often said, okay, I'm actually grateful for you. But I'm like, if I have Jesus. Um, she just said, I'm actually grateful for you. <laughs> we wow. knew it. Wow, so newsflash, <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually. That didn't come out right. But oh, oh, did it? If I have Jesus and if everything is okay oh. between you and I, then it's like, we can we can conquer the world. We can handle it. Yeah. And, um, well said, And Chelsea. a great place to... To really rest in and be a part of. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have like it. one life. I like think about yes. that all the time. Like we have one life. It's like, what are we focusing on? I don't know. Even just like yeah. little things that are bothering us. It's just like this is. We'll never get this day back, and we'll never. This is our one life. You're always gonna know. find things mm. to be upset about, mm. especially during the holidays. It's mm. easy to argue with family. Easy. It's so mm-hmm. easy to argue with family and find little things and nitpick yep. and. Um, but it's like, what a waste of time. Mm. What a waste of time, you know. Uh, read the room. Oh. You don't always have to go in with your opinion yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so, so helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really yeah, cool. So helpful. We're just honored to be here. Mm-hmm. Been dying Thank to have you. one of these. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, do you want a little milk with that? Or? Mm-hmm. That's... <laughs> I, I, think, I think we should end with a cookie. That's sweet. Oh. Gluten-free? Mm-hmm. Cheers. L.A. Cheers. Oh, gosh, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hey, hey, Lo, uh-huh. please, that, that's our cow. Yeah, this is a really <laughs> nice set. Please don't do that. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Cheers. Thank you. Neighbors, come Merry on over. Merry Christmas. Ma, the meatloaf. <laughs>
Okay, we are beyond excited to have our friend with us today, Emmanuel Ocho, and we are not going to have an uncomfortable conversation, but we are going to have a Christmas conversation. A Was Christmas that conversation, and I'm so grateful for Emmanuel for his life. Uh, he is a phenomenon in this country and around the world. The conversations that he has fostered and led, I think, are shaping uh, people's worldviews and perspectives, and he is a dear friend, and I'm so excited. We're both former NFL players. <laughs> okay, that part wasn't true, uh, but I'm really so excited to have Emmanuel Acho with us on our Christmas special. So, welcome with us, the one and only Emmanuel Acho. Emmanuel, well, you, uh, you have so much juice out of the squeeze of that NFL player joke. I, know, like, I laugh every time, every time. We're gonna Jay be 55, and he's still gonna be making that joke. Just so <laughs> yeah. you know, like prepare yourself. It's gonna go a long, long time. I'm a chap. That's a real oh. NFL role here. Have you ever been hit on the field? All right, let's not get into this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, get into this Emmanuel, way. obviously your name is Emmanuel. There was no better person. You knew it was Christmas coming, didn't you? You knew it was coming. You're like, wait a minute, why am I on this special? <laughs> How many friends do we have named Emmanuel? Found one. <laughs> yes. Call him. <laughs> Oh, did you I love did you it. get teased growing up yeah. around Christmas time? No, I only you know the Christmas carols. Uh, those were actually my favorite, the ones that had my name in them. Yeah. Emmanuel, you know, like we're not breaking into songs. Oh yeah, that is Amy Grant. It is Amy Grant. Wonderful. Grant. You know Amy Grant? Oh, yeah, you know Amy Grant? Oh, yeah, Thought it was before yeah, your generation. Yes. Funny guy. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Amy. Wow, I never okay, sing. This is a good moment. You're a great singer. <laughs> not true. Not so true. <laughs> uh, the in Excelsis Deo. If you sing it, I used to think when I was a kid it was about me in wow. Chelsea's day. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with our conversation. That's actually true. <laughs> we grew up together, yeah. so I thought I always thought it was Chelsea's name. Um, are you dating anyone? Judith, that is not the point of the Christmas special. We're not getting into that right now. Um, hey, how about this? I know that uh, your family is from Nigeria, yes. and you have been to Nigeria a lot of times for Christmas. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the traditions in Nigeria around Christmas? Man, I think some of my favorite Christmas memories would be going to Nigeria. I grew up going to private school. So we would get out for Christmas break around December 16th, and we would all as a family, my older brother, my two older sisters, mom and pops, would shoot to like rural village of Nigeria. So the crazy wow. thing is, is how do you get there? It usually was a 10 hour flight to maybe Dallas to Amsterdam, then a six hour flight from Amsterdam to Lagos, the former capital city. Yep. Then you get in a bus, an eight hour bus ride through a rocky terrain, not like American, just like driving down the interstate. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. Similar to the PCH. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, an eight hour bus ride like down to the village, but it was just beautiful because that's where so much of my family was. My grandma, wow. uh, when she was alive, was there. Aunts, mm. uncles, family, like we had a house built there. And just every Christmas morning, we would all just wake up and really be together. We probably wouldn't usually open gifts until we got back stateside because it was just too hard to travel with gifts, etc. But I vividly remember like waking up in rural village Nigeria on Christmas Day, singing the Christmas songs. My mom was always very intentional about we all would read. Um, the Christmas, Christmas story. story. Of course. Yes. Yeah. I and knew every, it. Everybody <laughs> I met to, your mom and dad. Every, I knew every, that was coming. Every, every good Christian mom. Everyone. We are reading Christmas stories and, before the present. And you know it's like you got to read six verses and you divvy it up yeah. by the number of people in the household. Got to divvy it up and Tell then re sing like three or four songs. Go around, name one thing you're thankful for, and then you open up the gifts. Uh, my favorite part, though, I would say of Christmas routines, Christmas uh, family routines, you would, we would each open one gift, one by one. Then yeah. after the first circle go round, then you open them all for the oh, sake of time. Oh, that was smart. Because oh, I now, that. I mean, we should, we should do that. Yeah, yeah ours has yeah. gotten a little long. It expedites, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It expedites things. <laughs> and so like the fun part would be <laughs> knowing <expedites>. like, <laughs> knowing like, oh, I know my sister got me a really good gift. So I'm going to open that one oh, so first. So you got to choose the one that you open in front of everybody. Correct. Oh. And usually it'd be like a nudge and a wink. Like, hey, you're going right. to want to open mine first. Or like some days siblings would be like, Hey, don't. Yeah, this, is not, no, just like, this hasn't been a good year for me. Yo, you know, you know, it's not been a good year when you get that text mid December, like, hey, y'all think we should just like exchange prayers for Christmas? <laughs> you know, like just time to, y'all just want to exchange like some prayers. Um, so, yeah, th those, are those traditions are great. Let me ask you because you've had such a unique experience, and of course, people are watching from all over the world, um, but going to Nigeria. 
I, I feel like so much of my Christmas is so westernized, mm -hmm. if that's okay to say. Um, what unique perspective can you share? How did Nigeria affect your perspective of Christmas, the holiday, the celebration, et cetera? I love that question. Um, Nigeria really, without being corny, but it really, 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 really puts Christ in Christmas. Wow. Right, and, and, and I can speak to this because I have the blue passport and the green passport, the American passport and the Nigerian passport. Yep. In America, it's not even necessarily our fault. We just got distracted on Christmas. Yeah. Mm. Like we get so focused and fixated on gifts. What are we buying other people? What are we receiving? That we truly forget like the true gift. Yep. But in Nigeria, ain't no gift exchange. 75% mm. of people live off less than a dollar a day. So like we're not out here exchanging new Jordans or the latest game playing console. We're just exchanging love. Wow. So truly, in Nigeria, the biggest lesson was really just putting, like, the Christ in it. Like, wow. sharing the laughs, sharing the hugs. And, like, I, I didn't emphasize this enough, but a rural village in Nigeria, not Wi-Fi. You're not making phone calls back to the States. This was pre-social media, mind you. Because when we would go back when I was in high school, think circa 2003, 2004, yep, yep, yep. pre-social yep. media. Wow. Um, and so it was really just a time of, like, togetherness, family church service after church service after <laughs> church service. <laughs> like, now that sounds but, like my Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> but the value was all of the people who you were That's with it, and yeah. nothing else to distract you or keep you. Do you miss it? Uh, yes. It's so weird. It's, it's, it's kind of like um, it's opposite. It's backwards in the sense that whenever I go to Nigeria on Christmas and or in general, you don't have any of the things that you gravitate towards in America but you love the life you get to live there. Mm. Mm. When I'm in Nigeria and when I was in Nigeria then, there wasn't social media, there wasn't the internet, there weren't gifts. You're not checking the latest sports center update. You're not calling to find out what happened with celebrity gossip. You're right. just there. And there's nothing but people. And I always say, going back to rural village Nigeria, especially even on Christmas, is the closest to the Bible I've ever lived. Wow. Wow. In the sense that, wow. you know, biblically, we forget, except when y'all remind us on, on Wednesdays and whatnot, <laughs> um, that, like, Jesus would point out things that he saw in the wilderness. Look at this fig tree, watch yep. it wither away. He wasn't just saying that because it sounded cool, but he was out in the wilderness looking at a fig tree, so That's to right. speak. We don't see that often in America because we live lives inside. But in Nigeria, it's so much so like that. Walking mm -hmm. to the stream, fetching your own water, watching children on Christmas morning bathe in the stream, then carry buckets back on their head to the house so you can cook Christmas dinner. Watching people wash their bikes, their motorcycles that they're driving across town and in the stream. Just different, unique things. So, yes, I do miss it. Mm. Um, I'm not complaining because I love what I have now. Yeah. But there's a certain sincerity that yeah. resides in villages of Nigeria for me that doesn't reside mm. here. Do you think it's possible to get that sincerity? Mm, that's a good question. Man, Man that's good. Um, it's possible, yes. Right. But you would have to be so intentional <laughs> well, about curating it. Yeah, I you don't know. To, I don't you know, know, like, you'd have to be so intentional about curating it, about like, hey, all right, on Christmas Day, let's all put our phones away and just be with each other. Problem is, think about what we do on Christmas now. Just got this gift. <laughs> just got these shoes. Like, hey, Merry Christmas from so me and my family. Yep. And, and like, we just have to do the matching certain... Christmas pajama photo. You already know. That's us. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like you just, you I have love to those do... Christmas jammies. <laughs> 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 but like, certain things you almost have to do or you feel like you have mm. to do. So is it possible? Yes, but it would be, you'd have to be so intentional about curating it. One of the things I love most about you, which I hope the church hears today, uh, you've accomplished so much, you've achieved so much, uh, you play, you actually really did play in the NFL and now I would say so you're, you're saying of, you didn't. Well, listen, Acho. I, I thought I this whole time. I told you not to go here because it makes me uncomfortable because the church thinks I'm in the NFL. Listen, I was a third string quarterback for the Seahawks back in, uh, I forget what year it was, 08, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Anybody out there from Mississauga High School, you know I was your quarterback. <laughs> um, the point being, one of the things I admire uh, so much about you is, is you are an achiever. Anyone who's watching is like, man, I want to do big things, I want to dream. Uh, every time we're together, you know, there's something on your mind and something you want to do and achieve, but, but it comes with this incredible contentment and peace. And I do wonder sometimes if 
that deep sense of gratitude has been developed over a process of getting out of your current context. I mean, here you are, superstar NFL player, now one of the leading voices around Western sports in the world. You're, you're way past football now. You're commentating on culture and life and, and, uh, and entertainment and celebrities. And, and yet there's a stillness and a peace about you. And I guess today, even on the Christmas special, I was like, man, I hope that... That, that our church can grasp, that you can do big things with your life and still be still and quiet and at peace, which is probably a pretty big part of the Christmas message. Yeah. But I think you reflect that. I really do. I had a conversation um, with my brother and he said, and it was recently, and he said, if you don't have peace inside of you, it's so hard to have peace outside of you. And I think that the beautiful part of figuring out this life is identifying that Internal peace will lead to the external peace. So you could, you could be in the midst of chaos, but as long as you have that internal peace, then regardless of the chaos you're in the midst of, you can still kind of stand strong yeah. and steadfast. And truth be told, we're all in the midst of chaos. Some chaos is just lived out publicly, depending upon what type of life or prof profession you occupy. Mm. But really, I think the secret I'm continuing to learn is... Just that internal peace, making sure that like deep inside of you, like Thank you, you are yeah. at peace with your creator, mm. you know? And I would say that, that, I mean, truth be told in front of the whole church, I think both you and I have experienced being in relationship with you and knowing you, there is a sense of like, well, man, if Acho can do it, we can do yeah. it. You know, in this wild and crazy life that in, does include Los Angeles a lot mm -hmm. of the time, not just Los Angeles, but watching you navigate the complexities of a, a high achieving lifestyle while also keeping that stillness and peace. And I, I do hope that translates today because I, I admired it uh, about you a lot. I have one more yeah. question, but I don't want to, yeah. you have another I question. I have a question. <laughs> um, We're grilling them. I know, right? <laughs> Welcome to the grilling show. It's, <laughs> it's a Christmas special. Having that peace as a single man around the holidays, mm. honest conversation, mm. how does that feel? Obviously, because we're talking so much about our kids and our family. And it's In other words, ladies, he's available. For us. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing this. Dude, it, I will be honest. Um, some of my loneliest moments of life, maybe my loneliest, came on Christmas Day. Whoa. It was 2013. I was in Philadelphia. I was playing for the Eagles. In Philadelphia at that time, the majority of my friends on that roster married, maybe married with kids. Nick Foles, one of my closest friends, yep. Super Bowl MVP quarterback. Uh, his wife, Tori, beautiful. I didn't want to impose on them. Uh, Matt Barkley, former USC quarterback. His wife, Brittany. I didn't want to impose on him. And those were two of my closest friends at the time. Hang at their house, eat dinner, all the things. But it's Christmas. To me, there's a jurisdiction on Christmas. <laughs> totally. There's a jurisdiction. You're very thoughtful. You know what I mean? Like, I'll invite myself over to y'all's house often, right. but not on Christmas Day. There's a certain <laughs> right. So true story, and this is actually hilarious now. Um, I remember waking up on Christmas Day 2013 by myself in my townhouse in South Philadelphia listening to JB's Christmas album. It's a oh, true story. It's a true story. My That's my favorite. True story. Um, except when you start crying listening to Mistletoe and you're also in a house by yourself. Anyway, so now it's another <laughs> conversation for another time. This is a true story. And so I did, I found another single friend of mine and we went to go watch a movie because that's open on Christmas and we had to go to a Chinese Chinese. restaurant. Chinese. Yes. Because that was the only place open on Christmas. Yes. And so I'm sitting there having Christmas by myself. I grew up having Christmas with my family. Had to read the Christmas story by myself, listen to a little, you know, worship music and then the Christmas album. And then just look like, where can I find food? Because I wasn't cooking. And so I, that's a great question you ask. And I think there's a lot of loneliness mm -hmm. yeah. experienced by single people, particularly single people living away from home. Yeah. on Christmas. And in Los Angeles, the majority of people are living away from home yep. because so many of us are chasing dreams and ambitions and goals. So it's very thoughtful to think of and mm. extend your mm. love to those who may not be in relationship around seasons like this. Wow. I love that. I actually love the impetus to consider inviting people over and to really be intentional with that as a church community yeah. to invite people to make an effort to consider. It's tough because like mm. I, I, you I don't mind inviting myself, like I said, but there are some like, let me ask you all, on, mm. on a holiday such as Christmas, and don't give me the pastoral answer, <laughs> um, don't you think 
it's a little excessive. If somebody were to be like, hey, Judah, Chelsea, can I come over on Christmas and like spend Christmas with y'all? Wouldn't you, y'all, like, y'all would say yes because it's within your like pastoral unwritten doctrine. <laughs> but like, you'd probably be like, mm. You grew up with people over at your house for this, Christmas. Listen, you're talking time. to a pastor's kid. So. so all we had was strangers for Christmas. My dad would invite someone he met who was, you know, didn't have a home that day and at, met at the mall. And I'd be like, Dad, I don't know. Dude, who is this person? You know, so you, you know what that's like. So we had a table, and then I married a, a more private person, which I'm grateful for. Thank you. But um, <laughs> I'm down. I'm down for the big party. I think we've done but, both. Yeah, we have. And I think it's year that's by nice year for answer. us for this. For this <laughs> that's a nice answer. Yeah, right? I wish we could have people over. I'll tell us what I'm telling you. I'm kidding. Our marriage is fine. Everybody relax. It's the Christmas special. But I, I also, as I've learned, so much of it is what you experience. Because yeah. growing up, yeah. on Christmas, it was private. Thanksgiving, my dad being a pastor, yo, come on. It doesn't even matter. But Christmas, it was really just the fam. So though my friends never rejected my invitation, I never even made the invitation. Because I was like, it's Christmas, man. Like, that's... That's you all. I'll invite myself over on every other day, I promise. But on Christmas, I was just like, no, that, that's y'all. So uh, it can yeah. be deeply lonely, which is yeah. why Chelsea and I would like to invite ourselves over to your house on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what are you making? Imagine. Oh, and the kids. No, seriously, man. Would that work? All right, all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so incredible. Obviously, we could keep going for hours. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Acho, I love you so much, man. I'm so grateful for you. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. And the Christmas special continues. Stay tuned. Stay tuned? What is this, Warner Brothers? <laughs>singing Silent Night together as a church. It goes all the way back to 1992. I was 13 years old. My mom and dad had just started the church that September, September of 1992. Fast forward to December of 1992, and you better believe my dad made sure we all sang Silent Night as a church. Some 30 years later, the church was originally called the City Church in Bellevue, Washington, and now it's church home and we're all over the world and we're still singing Silent Night. I know my dad would be proud. It is undoubtedly his favorite Christmas chorus and uh, it's a wonderful tradition. This year though, I want to shed a little bit of light on this story. It's actually a really cool story that has impacted me. Uh, our team went to work and discovered that this song was actually written in an old Austrian Alpine village by a 24-year-old priest named Joseph Moore. His story is incredible. He actually didn't have a dad. His dad abandoned him and his mom in, in, before even really he could remember. He was feeling isolated, alone, broken, and he found a spot in a local church, and he wouldn't have found that spot if it wasn't for an old choir director that welcomed him in and encouraged him. Before he knew it, he was studying and became a priest at 24 and then put pen to paper and wrote what we now call Silent Night. In fact, the village that he was living at the time was so devastated and decimated by wars that the organ in their church had, had been broken, maybe even by bombs. And so the first actual singing in that old Alpine village was by guitar with the help of a local school teacher who helped to put the chorus and the melody together. And you know what's so incredible? Is this song authored by a 24 year old priest who had experienced incredible pain and rejection and abandonment has now been translated to over 300 languages and is still sung around the world. It was written in the 19th century and yet here we are singing Silent Night. I can only imagine what you and I are facing in 2022. And I believe these words can be healing, they can be reflective, as together we remember and rehearse our wonderful superhero, our savior, and our deliverer. Let's sing this together.
that line, sleep in heavenly peace. Can I tell you just for a few moments why you can sleep in heavenly peace? You think about the Savior, the superhero of the world's arrival to earth, and you have to ask yourself why. Why did Jesus arrive at a seemingly random, unknown barn in a little town called Bethlehem? in the cover of night, in darkness, in anonymity, the Savior arrives. He arrives to a befuddled stepdad, if you will, to an amazed mother and animal onlookers. That's his arrival. It is so ordinary, it's, it's easily missed. But I want us to consider this just for a moment, that maybe his arrival is indicative of his mission and his mandate. Do you feel anonymous? Do you feel overlooked? Do you feel like you live nowhere notable? Maybe your own accomplishments or achievements or attempts at achievements don't seem to amount to much. And you wonder, do you fit in the story? Most of the time our heroes come in a beautiful Camaro, in a Knight Rider or Batmobile or a white stallion. And yet the superhero of the world arrived in a barn in a little town called Bethlehem. Why? Because wherever you are and whatever you're going through, and no matter how bleak and dark it may seem, Jesus is there. He's there. Just like the night of his birth, he's going to meet you and me, ordinary people, right where we are. Maybe we've already started to sing Silent Night and you've already started to feel sad, lonely, isolated. It's one of the main reasons Church Home exists, so that you know how invaluable you actually are. And I'm believing on this Silent Night that God's going to meet you and God's love is going to encounter you. So Christ the Savior is born. I love that line, I love those lyrics. It reminds me of the angel's announcement to the shepherds. The shepherds weren't at the barn in Bethlehem yet, but they had been anticipating. Shepherds, of course, in antiquity were the most common of people. In fact, seen is so unclean they weren't even welcome in the synagogue or the local church. And yet, the host of heaven saw fit to announce to the most common people that the Savior was being born and that it would be joy to all and hope 
to everyone. Joy to the world, they announced. Peace on earth and hope and opportunity and love for everyone, for everyone. Think about it just for a moment. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I almost misquoted John 3, 16. You definitely can't do that as a pastor, but let me say it again, just so you know that I know John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, do you see it? Whosoever. This is good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, all people, whoever. That's you. That's me. Normal people, everyday people, average people like you and me. But I want to remind you, this good news isn't for church folk. It isn't for religious people. It's not just for spiritual people. This is for all people. Do you feel like an outsider? Do you feel like an outlier? Do you feel like you're on the outside looking in, particularly when it comes to spirituality and religion and church? Like, could I actually fit there? I got good news. This is the Christmas season. And the Christmas season tells us a story that shepherds are included. That's right. The guys excluded from the church are included in the story and the announcement. And that's you. And that's me. Our passionate church home is to be a church where there is good joy, great joy for all people. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whoever you are, whatever your identity is, I am here to tell you, Jesus is for you. Jesus is for the people. On the night of his birth, the declaration was clear. Christ, the Savior, is born and he is born for everyone. Pray today in these moments as we are reflecting and singing and experiencing his love that you feel seen. You feel that God has prepared and made a plan for your life because he has. Christ the Savior is born and this will be good tidings of great joy for all the people. Sing it Dawn of redeeming grace. I love that phrase. What incredible lyrics. And I want to talk about two elements. The dawn of God's grace on earth. That really is the Christmas story. One of the names of God, one of the most endearing names of God that Jesus reveals is that he, in fact, is Emmanuel God with us. In fact, many, many years Decades and centuries before Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a barn, he was prophesied about that there would come a God whose name would be Emmanuel. Emmanuel simply means God is with us. God is near to us. God is close to us. That perfect baby born in a barn in Bethlehem declares a whole new era of human history, the era of grace, unearned, unmerited favor that comes from the person of God, hand delivered by God himself. But before we go any further, I want to remind you that God is here. And one of his names is Emmanuel, which means he's not far from you. He is actually near to you. 
Sometimes I wonder in all the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season and all of the traditions and the trees and the TV programs and the snowmen and the milk that I'll never drink because I'm lactose intolerant, you know, whatever, all the bells and whistles of the Christmas season, sometimes one of the most important messages gets lost. And that is God is not far. One scripture says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It literally means he's at arm's length. He's right there. You ever been like, uh, for me, I'm at the dentist and I'm at the dentist and I literally was telling someone who was putting on my makeup dirt before we shot this special that I actually need to go to a dentist who will put me under anesthesia. Like I cannot remember. As a young boy, I remember my mom holding my hand while I was getting dentist work done on my teeth. Well, dentist work is usually on your teeth. But just having my mom at arm's length, being able to hold her hand during the pain. What are you facing? What are you going through? I got good news today. He's at arm's length. He's right there. You can reach out and touch him. And I'm believing during this Christmas season that you will feel his nearness. You will feel his proximity. The dawn of redeeming grace is upon us. Lastly, can I remind you that a whole new era has been ushered in through this baby born in a barn in Bethlehem, and that era is called grace. What is grace? What's the message of grace? What's the orientation of grace? It's like 2 Corinthians 5 says, he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I might become right in our relationship with God. What is sin? It's the selfish, self-serving things we do that hurt ourselves and others. And if you're like me, I do it often. And yet God came in the form of Jesus who was sinless so that he could pay the penalty for our selfishness, our error, our wrong, and our sin. You know, the, the source of all wars and murders and pains and injustices in the world because we, left to ourselves, are selfish. But there came a selfless one, Jesus. Born, grew up perfect, died at 33, rose again on the third day to prove that in fact everything he taught was true. He's transcendent and he's God and he changed the world. And now here's the shift. Here's the orientation change. This world is subject to do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. Grace now, because of Jesus, the whole orientation has changed. Now during this Christmas season and every Christmas season and every season, we celebrate, do bad, and get good. I know, it's illogical, sometimes nonsensical, counterintuitive, but it's true. Now you can do bad and get good. Forgiveness, acceptance, love, and care. What do we call that? Well, Joseph Moore called it the dawn of redeeming grace. It's available to you and it's available to me. You can be forgiven, you can be accepted, you can be covered, and you can be secure in the love of Jesus and your eternal home in one moment of receptivity. And so I urge you, I invite you, I set before you this new dawn, this new era of redeeming grace. In fact, if you would like to make a decision of your own free will to just accept, I just wanna remind you, grace can't be earned or then it's not grace. It can't be deserved or then it's not grace. You can't warrant it or then it's not free, it's not a gift. A gift is not something you earn or deserve, it's something you accept and receive. If you'd like to receive this free gift that only Jesus offers, all it takes is something like, I accept, literally. Wherever you are in the world watching this, you simply say, I receive it, I accept it, and it's, it's actually done. So right now, wherever you are, a lot of people say you gotta pray a prayer, you gotta say all the right words. No, I just think you gotta open your heart. Maybe you open your heart like me out of desperation, out of a need for real purpose, direction, and meaning in this life. I urge you right now, open up your heart. Say something out loud like, I accept you. And it's done 
and you are forgiven forever. And please know that our community exists to serve you, help you, and encourage you. Thanks, church. The infant souls and dead minds oh, Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep in heavenly Hey church, thank you so much for joining us for our annual Christmas special. A huge thanks to our special friends. We want to give gifts. Obviously, it's that Christmas season. Jason and Lauren Kennedy, our dear friends, and a gift for Emmanuel Acho. Our dear. Okay, now we're doing a Christmas swap here. Church, we love you. Hey, and a big thanks to Israel Houghton. Israel, we love you. I think you're taking us out here. So this is from our family to yours. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you.